All right, now this is a real educational video because we are talking about the chromatic scale today. We all know the chromatic scale. We probably all should love it, even if we don't. And there has been a lot said about this, a lot of books written about it, a lot of exercises on it. But this is my version of the most efficient way to practice and the best fingerings that you should use for playing the chromatic scale. And we're going to just be talking about the fundamental range of the instrument today, which for me is from low E up to throat B flat. So we're not going to go above the so-called break, but even though we're only going to be practicing in the lower register of the instrument, the fingerings obviously transfer up the 12th once you put the register key on. So you're really practicing uh, the range all the way up until about the C above the staff. So even though we're only talking about the first register of the instrument, I still like to break it up even further. And I like to talk about the instruments in two halves. So this first part of the chromatic practice is going to be just for the bottom half of the instrument, or the bottom joint. So in other words, from low E to low C. So I like to practice starting in duples. You can think of this as eighth notes or sixteenth notes, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to notate it as 16th notes, and just in a loop, so those are the notes that we're going to be playing, but let's talk about all of the different things that we can do with our hands, even in that simple excerpt of the chromatic scale. So for starters, obviously, we have a choice. We can start on the left low E or on the right low E. And I think it's critically important to practice both options equally. But for starters, let's start with left low E, which I feel like is most people's preference. So a couple of things to be aware of. First thing, of course, is that we want to use the forked B natural fingering when we are both ascending and descending in the chromatic scale. So rather than flipping... Now there's value in practicing that, but not so much for the chromatic scale. So rather than flipping, we want to use this forked fingering. You could even just isolate that little section of the chromatic scale to get used to that specific fingering. And in fact, this is a fingering that you want to be using um, most of the time when you're playing B natural or F sharp if you're playing with the register key on because it actually is the better sounding note with better intonation for um, acoustical reasons that I'm not going to go into in this video. The next thing that you want to be aware of is when are your pinkies actually releasing and going to their next key that they need to be pressing. So you see when I go to F sharp here, this right pinky is no longer needed on this right key, so I can start to move it to the G sharp. And then when I go back down, I actually like to press with both pinkies for the F sharp, even though you don't really need to press with the right, since this key is moving automatically with the left lever. But since you're going to F sharp, I like to have it down already. So I like to practice going... And both pinkies are going down there. Uh... 
And of course, as you're practicing looping this, you want to minimize excessive movements like lifting your pinkies really high or fingers traveling up away from their tone holes as much as you possibly can. <laughs> So that's starting on the left E. Now let's talk about starting on the right E. All of the same rules pretty much apply, but switched to the opposite hand now. So to begin with, even though this left F natural key is not needed to play the low E, I'm pushing it down to start with. That way I don't have to do some awkward coordination where I'm lifting my right pinky and pressing my left pinky down at the same time. I can just already have this left pinky down. And then for this set of fingerings when I descend, I again push the F natural key down when I press the right F sharp down. And I'm exaggerating a little bit here so that you can see. So naturally everybody will have a preference for one of these starting positions over the other and it's really important to try to minimize that preference as much as you can because sometimes you need to use the opposite of the fingerings that you are the most comfortable with. So I like to recommend practicing this lower segment just on these two options of alternating between starting on your left E and your right E a couple of minutes every day. And you can do it with a metronome if you want, but that's not really necessary. The most important thing for me is that I'm looking for even fingers and as relaxed and with as little movement as I can manage. Okay, so now on to talking about the chromatic scale for the top joint of the instrument. And this is where my version of which fingerings to use is maybe a little bit controversial. I've read a lot of the books, a lot of the beginner books, I've watched a lot of the videos that other teachers have made, and uh, I am the only one that I've seen that advocates doing it this way, but I think if you read between the lines in the Close and the Vade Mecum, um, some of these foundational classical texts of playing the clarinet, I think that this is actually the proper French conservatory way to play not just the chromatic scale, but to play any scale, uh, major, minor, whatever, with, these, uh, with some of these fingerings on the left hand. You'll see what I'm talking about. On the way up, I think it's really important to use this fork key, or banana key, or whatever you want to call it, this little sliver key for your D sharp, and flip to your F sharp on the way up. So the distinction that I'm going to make here is that there's a different set of fingerings for the ascending scales and the descending scales when it comes to these, these keys. D sharp E flat, F sharp G flat. Two different fingerings, two different notes. So when I play D sharps, I'm using this. When I play F sharps, I'm using first finger. And we're just going to go up to G sharp for this little segment that we're going to loop. So you can practice this isolated since these are probably different fingerings than you're used to. Just practice the ascending portion. And 
I know a lot of people say don't flip, you don't want to flip, but actually you do want to flip. There's a lot of places in the repertoire where that's the way to do it. And there's a lot of places in the repertoire where having the forked D sharp option available to you is so great. And you'd rather, it would be better to learn that on all of your scales and your chromatic scales than having to learn it the one or two times that you really, really need it. Get familiar with it now. Okay, so now that we're we're going to say that we're familiar with ascending, that might realistically take a few days of your practice just to get used to these fingerings. Now when we go down, we're going to use the more conventional things that uh, people talk about. So G flat is going to be thumb and the bottom two side keys. E flat is going to be first two fingers, thumb, and the bottom side key. And now let's put it all together. So ascending fingerings are one way, descending fingerings are another way. So it's really possible to get a lot of speed and a lot of fluidity with these fingerings that you might think, oh, that's a little unconventional to go for the flip and to go for this uh, fork key. But just trust me, it's worth it to put a little bit of time in. Okay, so the last part of the range that we have not talked about yet is, of course, up into the B flat area. So I like to start on E natural. And you can think of this just in duples. And this is a great way to also isolate practicing the flip to F sharp going up versus the thumb and bottom two trill keys G flat that you're going to use on the way going down. So once you've mastered both the bottom segment and the top segment of the chromatic scale in this fundamental register, you can put the entire thing together. So for starters, we're going to think in 16th notes and go from low E up to A flat. So I'm going to start with my left pinky on the E natural, and after I've done it a few times, I'll alternate to the right. <laughs> And so if you want to go all the way up through the whole range of the fundamentals, so up to B flat, we'll go in triplets. And then switching. Please leave me a comment with your thoughts on this way of practicing the chromatic scale, or if you have any questions for me, I would be happy to answer them as well. Thanks for watching, and happy playing.